Hi, everyone. Um, my name is Stephanie, and I am a massage therapist from Phoenix, Arizona. And I wanted to talk to you a little bit because I had a meeting today with Adam Finkel, who is the legislative director of the Arizona House of Representatives. And I was able to talk about some of the concerns that we have as workers in the massage industry. And so I wanted to share that with you and what is happening. So this meeting was organized by a group called One Fair Wage. Um, One Fair Wage is supporting the $15 minimum wage increase. Um, and they're a group that's national and they've been working since last year to um, really improve biz, um, the lives and working conditions of service workers all over the country. Now we're included in that because in Arizona, we are still classified as service workers. Um, I'm gonna give you a little bit of my background. So I was working three different jobs before the pandemic hit last year in March. Um, I was working at one of the largest resorts in our state. Um, I was working at a, another um, resort hotel in Old Town Scottsdale. And then I was also working at a smaller day spa, kind of an upscale day spa. Um, and when the pandemic hit, the first job that I lost was at the day spa. Um, two days later, they, they laid us off um, right after they were starting to talk about lockdowns. They laid us all off on a Saturday um, and they laid, up, laid off employees all over the country. And then um, two days later, they filed bankruptcy. So there was no notice, there was no anything. It, the job was just gone, the company was gone. Um, and then about a week or two later, um, the other resort that I was working at, the one that's the largest in Arizona, um, that resort laid off 700 employees. They shut down their entire spa. They laid off my boss, the spa director. They laid off everyone. Um, and so that was gone. Um, and then I got furloughed until October 1st by my position in Old Town Scottsdale. So One Fair Wage um, actually helped me and they gave me a $500 grant um, near the beginning of the pandemic, which really helped my family um, and helped us out a lot. So I have been supporting and sharing the information from this organization since April of last year as much as I can. And they've been doing legal clinics to help out workers. They just did one yesterday to help out workers um, in Arizona. Um, so if you see um, anything that One Fair Wage is doing, I highly suggest that you get in there and learn about what they're doing and um, support this. So now as far as we go, um, they had invited me as a hospitality worker to speak um, in this meeting with the legislature. There was also another hospitality worker who was supposed to be in the meeting, but um, she is ill, so she wasn't able to make it. And then there was a worker who worked at a restaurant um, as a server in Flagstaff. Um, and then there were the one fair wage representatives in this meeting as well. Um, and then Adam Finkel, the legislative director of the Arizona House of Representatives. And the topic was raising the minimum wage to $15 an hour. So I was able to share our story as massage therapy employees and um, how we're paid. So what I told him was that generally in the franchises um, and you know it happens in spas all over, you basically have your two week pay period, right? And so over the two week pay period, you get paid your massages plus your tips or the minimum wage, whichever is greater. So if you're only doing a few massages over the week um, and you get tips, you're not gonna get those tips. The company is gonna take them away from you and they're gonna just give you whatever the minimum wage is. And while it doesn't happen to us often, it definitely does happen, especially during the slower times in the summer for us as massage therapists. Um, we're also not paid when we're not working hands-on and I was able to bring that up. And the first thing that the legislative director of the Arizona House of Representatives said to me when I told him that was, isn't that illegal? I told him, yes, we question that often. How is this legal? Um, but companies justify it because they're paying us the legal minimum wage. So 
we're really seeing that the labor that's happening in the service industry, it's seen by employers as a cost and not an investment. Labor is an investment in your business. So if you're a massage business owner and you're listening to me right now, please start trying to view labor as an investment. The more that you invest in your employees and the more that you invest in the labor in your organization, the better that you're going to do, okay? Um, I also was able to bring up the fact that any discounts, any promotions and any sales that happen in our spas or our clinics affect our wages. Because every time that you put out a discount or you put out a promotion, it causes us to make less. And it's really not acceptable anymore to be able to have this like sliding variable income that you can never really count on. It's really important that we have a stable income. I know someone who was a massage therapist and decided that she wanted to buy a house and she wasn't able to buy a house because they wouldn't give her a loan because even though she made um, enough money to be able to cover a loan, she wasn't able to get one because of her variable income and she didn't have a steady pay. And I really want employers, especially in the state of Arizona and all over the country to start thinking about that. Start thinking about the impact that this is having on your workers. It's really important and it's a really, um, we need to open up this conversation so we can start moving our industry forward past all of this, okay? Um, so he was, um, you know, the rep was really attentive to what I was saying and he understood that. And if our wages fall because we are being offered um, a discounted service, then our customers are paying their tips on that discounted service. Our customers don't always know that they're supposed to pay on the full price of the service. So they end up paying lower tips, which lowers our wages all over the place. And it brings me to a point that was brought up in this group um, just a couple of days ago. Tips are not wages. They never have been and they never will be. TIP stands for to ensure prompt service. A TIP was supposed to be something that a worker received um, over and above their wages in order to, um, to ensure that they were getting an, a service that was on time. It wasn't about the way that the um, person looked. It wasn't about the way that the person acted. It was just to ensure a prompt service. And it started in the service industry and for some reason, over time, that became part of the wages that people were making. And it's not okay. And anybody who operates this business like this should know that while it's difficult to pay your, your personnel um, a, a living wage, we understand that, that it can be difficult in some situations, it doesn't make it okay. It doesn't make it right for your worker. So um, the other thing that we were able to discuss here is about tip sharing. And some of people were talking about how tip sharing happens in restaurants with tip pools. And what at one of the resorts that I worked at, which is a really large and very popular resort here, um, our tips were mandatory because they came to us as service charges. But we also had to share our tips 2% of our tips to be exact with our workers who were our spa attendants and our housekeepers. I was totally fine with that. And I think most people were fine with that because I feel like they deserve to have some portion of that as well. But at the same time, it totally goes against the fact that the law is that tips are 100% workers. And when you try to say that the tips are a part of wages, that does not go with the law that says tips are 100% workers. Because if you can take their massages plus their tips, or you can pay the minimum wage, that does not really co uh, compute with what the law actually is, which is that tips are 100% always the workers. And the workers who are providing the service are the workers who are supposed to be getting 100% of those tips, not 98% of those tips. So 
um, I was able to bring that up as well. Um, and then we also were able to talk about um, COVID guidelines. And we talked about how the, um, at the beginning of the pandemic, and I think this went on for quite some time and probably still is going on in some spas, um, that employees were required to wear masks, but customers were not. And I don't know if you're a worker in a spa, um, and if your customers are required to wear masks, and I know it's been a point of heated debate, but really the guidelines in the law said, okay, the employees had to wear masks. So most spas instituted that. Um, and I will say that I know why one of our major franchises did it, and it's because of the consultant that they had um, come in and talk to them about how to um, reduce COVID in their workplace. And that was one of the guidelines was to have their employees wear masks, but they, they didn't expand on that and say that the customers should be wearing masks as well. Um, you know, and I was able to explain to them, we're in a small enclosed room generally with no windows for at least an hour, if not an hour and a half or two hours with customers. Um, and there's no, there's no airflow, the ventilation isn't good. And a few of the franchises that I know around have instituted air scrubbers um, and better air ventilation systems for the rooms, but a lot of them haven't. Um, and so we're still at issue there. Um, we talked about businesses ignoring guidelines and, um, and how and why they're doing that. And, you know, he said, like, he just cannot believe that business owners are ignoring the guidelines and that they're getting away with it. And when we're talking about the legislative director of the Arizona House of Representatives with these opinions, this makes a difference and it makes a huge difference to us and how we work and the standards that our employers need to be held to. Um, so we also talked about um, the COVID Act, um, the Coronavirus Payment Act, which came out um, in, I believe, April or June when people were returning back to work. Um, and in that act, if you were sick or you had to quarantine with coronavirus, you were supposed to be paid. If you were not paid by your spa or your clinic, um, that was against the law. Um, and all workers were supposed to be paid when that was happening. Um, so any worker that was waiting for a COVID test should have been paid while they were out on leave. Um, and this, this Protection Act ended in December. Um, and I'm not really sure how they're going to go forward with this, um, but we did have a few points brought up that workers were being asked to come in and work even when they were waiting for, even when they were waiting for testing. Um, workers were being asked to come in and work while they were sick. And it's not just happening in our industry. That is happening in the restaurant industry. It's happening in um, the nail salons. It's happening in hair salons. This is happening in the service industry and it is widespread in the United States. So if you think that you're safe, um, as a consumer, you're really not, okay? Companies are saying, yes, we are instituting these protections, but it's really not always true. Um, the, with the hospitality worker that was out of our meeting today, she was sick and they made her come to work. And they told her that if she didn't come to work, um, she was gonna get fired. So <laughs> I don't really understand what that is about, but you know, whatever hotel that she works for is making her come to work while sick, cleaning rooms in a pandemic. So just wanted to put that out there just so that you know what's going on. Um, there's also no paid time off um, for, for workers in our industry in general. Like we do have sick time, which amounts to what, 40 hours in a year um, in the state of Arizona. But this is a big problem. And one of the bigger problems in Congress that I want to bring up with you right now is that um, businesses are asking for immunity protections um, against liability for their workers contracting coronavirus. It's a big issue. Adam brought it up on our conversation. Um, it's appalling 
that businesses would bring this up and try to ask for a liability protection when they can't even pay their workers um, when they have time off and they're asking them to come into work while they're waiting for testing or they're sick. This is absolutely ridiculous and something that we should never have to put up with in our industry. And we do all the time. So um, I just wanted to let you know that as a massage therapist in the state of Arizona, somebody who is very concerned about the future of our industry, um, I am going to keep talking to our state legislature every chance that I can get. And there are multiple different organizations that I'm involved with so that I can get a chance to do this and to speak for us. If you have any concerns or you have any questions, please leave them in the comments below this video. I would love to hear from you. If you want to send me a confidential message, send it to USOLMT at gmail.com. And then you can also visit um, my website, www.uslmt.com to find out what we are doing. Um, and it's not just me, but I am the founder of this organization and we're creating a new national association for massage therapists to help people engage with problems like this that we could solve by talking to our legislatures and getting involved in our industry. Um, it's a way for people who are not members of AMTA to also come in into a group um, and have discussion and put their input um, in on legislative issues. And so we really want all massage therapists to start paying attention and to start getting involved um, and to start helping us out so that we can move our industry forward. Um, the, um, the national group that we have um, has about 830 members. We'd love to have you join. If you just go on Facebook and you look up USOLMT-US Organization of Licensed Massage Therapists, please come join our group, um, put in your input on anything that we're bringing up. Um, and we're working on issues um, that are bigger than us and bigger than our workers um, and what's happening in our workplaces all year long. So um, I'm really excited about this. I feel like we're starting to make traction. We're actually having contact with state legislatures now um, and we'll be able to talk more and maybe our industry won't be left in the dark anymore and we'll be able to get some things happening so anyway thanks for listening just wanted to fill you in again any questions please just ask thanks